check if we go like we are live now. People. Where is uh Codox Como? Oh yeah, I think we're live now. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Perfect. Beautiful. <laughs> um yeah, let me just share on my Facebook. Yeah, perfect. Let me just share on my Facebook. <laughs> yeah. nice, All right. Nice. Um good morning. I think probably in Europe and good afternoon <laughs> and good evening for my Aussie my Aussie friends. Um welcome to the Godox uh talk, Global Educations. Um today we are going to have a fantastic Oh, we are interviewing this fantastic photographer, Vlodia, um, who does this amazing extreme action photographies. I love his work, especially the way he's using foreground, how to how to frame the subject with a clear negative space and, of course, his off-camera flash um, to make the people really stand out, um, you know, smaller people stand out from the background, which is beautiful. Um, without... Any further ado, I'll leave the talk to him because he has lots of amazing work to share with us. And he's also going to discuss this high-speed sync, right? I think it's a very yeah. controversial topic because lots of portrait photographers will be, oh man, you're going to lose so much power and it's very hard to control. And why don't you just use ND lens? I, I think it's all about perspective, isn't it? Like different methods work for different generous and um, yeah, here yeah. Vlody is going to share his perspective and how HSS <laughs> helps him to define his unique style. I will leave this with him and um, let's welcome Vlody. Um, so just... yeah. Thank you, Aris. Uh, hello, everybody. Yeah, my name is uh, Valoria. Uh, I am action and adventure sports photographer. So uh, today uh, let's have a uh, small conversation about flashes, like specifically about high speed sync mode. Um, the most important thing like in action photography, it's very often when we use uh, high speed mode. So let's start from the beginning. Yeah, uh, usually there are three standard factors uh, affecting our exposure. Yeah, we all know them. It's aperture, it's ISO, and it's shutter speed. Oh, I have a little bonus. I don't know, on camera, if you will now see on the camera, on my web camera, you can see this aperture, like here. It's uh, aperture from Sony lens. I think it's 50 millimeters, but it like works like that, yeah. Cool thing <laughs> to play. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, as I said, we have three standard factors affecting our exposure. It's aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. We all know this because we learned this from the uh, start of our photography experience. Uh, so if one of these factors will change, uh, another one uh, need to be changed to keep exposure correctly. Yeah. I think uh, these basics uh, kind of know every one. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, let's go to the next slide. But when we're doing uh, flash photography, uh, there are a little bit difference because when we start to work with flashes, there are a little change. Now shutter speed doesn't really count, but it's only while we're in normal flash mode. It's important thing, yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, high speed sync mode. I'm talking only about normal mode, yeah. So in normal flash mode, uh, shutter speed doesn't count. Uh, so with flash, there are four factors affecting our exposure. Uh, it's the same aperture and ISA, yeah, we all know that. And uh, the new now factors uh, is uh, distance and power of your flash. So two things from our camera, it's, uh, as I said, ISA and aperture, and two things from our flash, it's distance and power. Uh, and even in detailed flash mode, we only control ISO and aperture. Uh, therefore, we need to use flash exposure compensation to affect our detailed uh, flash exposure. Yeah, so uh, 
in detail mode, we also use uh, only aperture and ISO. Shutter doesn't count in normal speed sync mode. Uh, so as I said, when we are shooting with flash, uh, shutter speed doesn't really count. But of course, there are some deep technical details that uh, we will now discuss and we'll try to explain. Uh, I will try to explain you in the simplest way. Mm, I'm not like person who knows uh, every single technical thing, you know, like, <laughs> and I can't precisely tell all numbers and other physical or construction things. I will just try to explain the possible easiest way how to understand how high speed sync uh, works. And we shall will share my experience in photography with you. Uh, so yeah, let's go to sec third slide. So yeah, uh, here's a standard scheme. Uh, please keep in mind that we're always talking about high speed sync usage in action and extreme sports. Yeah, uh, where athletes are moving really fast. It's important. Uh, it's a little bit different conditions compared when uh, we're shooting portraits, uh, when model can stay still and uh, another still uh, subjects or objects. So shutter has two curtains that opens and close. Yeah, at speed slower than 250 uh, of a second. Sometimes it's uh, 320. It depends on your camera. The first curtain opens and stays open while second curtain doesn't even move. So that's the moment when the whole sensor of your camera is opened and the entire frame is exposed, uh, as you can see on the uh, presentation. Uh, since flash is an instantaneous burst of light to thousand of a second, we need to sync open shutter with this flash burst. Uh, so this light from the flash will expose the whole frame. Uh, you can see icon uh, on the third picture with when flash is working here. Yeah? And uh, this is only moment when in these conditions flash working, like only in third picture, not in first, on second, only third. Uh, that's for slower speeds. And exactly that's why I said that usually shutter speed doesn't affect on your exposure while we're using flash in normal mode. Uh, that's because uh, often before 250 shutter speed, uh, the whole sensor is opened. And anyway, you will have this uh, burst of light on your sensor. Uh, so yeah. But there is some serious issues in uh, sports photography when we're doing that. So as you can see, because of slow shutter, we can't too fast moving things sharp. Uh, as we can see on the example, athlete uh, limbs are very blurry because of very fast movement. There are rare situations where I am shooting moving with shutter around 250, as I said, and without high speed sync mode. I will show these examples later, but uh, those conditions are really rare. Uh, for now, I just want to show you the main problem of sports photography and high speed sync. Mm, it's uh, if you are shooting uh, at uh, 250, it's motion blur of moving subjects and objects, whatever. So let's try to set up shorter timing of shutter without high speed sync mode. And uh, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. So yeah, here's the second scenario. And uh, as we can see, at shutter speed faster than 250 of a second, the first curtain of the shutter opens. And before it can completely open, the second curtain starts to follow behind and close. This means that there is no time that the sensor open for light all at once. Like it's never opened fully, yeah? A small opening is traveling across the sensor, exposing as it goes. So I want to say that a higher, higher shutter speeds. Uh, one moment. Yeah, the higher shutter speeds uh, never leaves 
open, fully open sensor. So that's why we have issues with blackout in photography uh, when shooting, of course, actions. So here's example of blackout effect. Uh, so we finally fixed uh, motion blur problem, uh, but now part of the photo is black. Yeah, especially these effects will appear where visible while we're shooting in dark environment or at night. And uh, the more higher shutter will be, the stronger blackout effect we will have. And at this moment, we have only one solution, activate high speed shooting mode. But before explain, explaining next stop, uh, next step, sorry. <laughs> I want to show you one interesting benefit of this blackout effect. So on the next slide, there is kind of interesting situation. Yeah, uh, Aris, could you please move our avatars <laughs> a little bit? Yeah, perfect, thank you. Uh, so once while I was shooting reportage of site link competition, I tried one thing and uh, it worked really well. Of course, this effect you can gain now through Photoshop and it's absolutely not unique uh, in our days, but just want to share this kind of experience uh, in my photography life. <laughs> so it works well, really good with reflection when you need to highlight reflection with flash, but the main subject leave a silhouette with uh, without flash on it, yeah. Uh, so here you can see that on the bottom of the frame, athlete is highlighted with the flash, but on the top, no. Uh, I gained this result using advantage of high shutter speed without high speed sync mode. Potentially, you can experiment and create something interesting with this, especially using reflection like here in the puddle on, or in the mirror or in the glass whatever <laughs> it's absolutely not the best example uh, of photography what i am showing you now uh, but just saw how you can turn photography technical issues into advantages some kind of interesting way <laughs> a quick Sorry. question Volodya. how yeah. do you what trigger would you be would you use to achieve this kind of result because i, I think uh, X yeah yeah, yeah, it's uh, X-Pro for Sony. It's, I will show you now. Here it is. <laughs> yeah, this one, small. Ah, uh, so you basically disable high-speed sync, and then you will receive that kind of result. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, kind of interesting situation because I, uh, like, I just forget to turn on high-speed sync mode, <laughs> and it, it uh, left me in that result, yeah. And later I was just thinking, like, hey, it might be a cool feature, like, you can half a frame uh, live in flash and half a frame live without flash. And it, uh, it can bring us to some interesting ideas in the future, of course. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, you can turn back our on full screen presentation <laughs> for people to see. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, we are finally here. Now I will try to explain you how exactly uh, high-speed sync mode works. So the way how HSS uh, solves high shutter blackout problem is that it starts firing the strobe in pulses as the first curtain opens, and it continues to pulse until after the second curtain closes. Yeah. So this pulsing is happening so fast that the sensor perceives this as continuous light. Uh, so now, as that slit moves across camera sensor, uh, your flash now exposes for the entire frame correctly. And it's very important. So technically, it's quite simple, yeah? But uh, for me, it's very impressive. Just imagine how fast this whole setup works. Uh, thousands of a second, uh, our eye can see just like a micro flash. Uh, our phones sometimes can't even film this flash burst you know, uh, because they are super fast. Uh, so yeah, technically, this realization is amazing. Uh, because uh, it's like several, several micro micro flashes uh, as one huge flash. Yeah. Um, I heard another mites on my saying that yeah. he made a user energy of when you do high speed sync, um, the flash burst 
uh, multiple shots. So it almost, you can think of uh, it works like a continuous light. Would you agree or disagree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like um, uh, sensor of the camera uh, sees see this flash as continuous light. Yeah, that's why uh, um, technically uh, this uh, setup works. <laughs> Because uh, our camera see like it's not only one burst of flash, it's like tit, 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 tit. and uh, it thinks like, oh, it's continuous light. Yeah. So uh, it's right image on the camera uh, without blackouts. So yeah, uh, let's just compare both, both options side by side. Yeah. Also on the diagram, you can see all things. It's uh, really important to understand that because uh, we can say on the top that the middle of exposure flash bursts once and on a full power when the frame is fully opened. Yeah, when athlete perform a trick, trick uh, frame is opened. It's like uh, when uh, shutter speed is uh, 250 or under that. Yeah, and the uh, flash only one time. Oops, and that's all. Uh, but it moves on a full power, yeah, if you can uh, set up your flash uh, with uh, full power. So, but on the bottom setup, uh, we can see like flash bursts a lot of time during the whole exposure process. And uh, the only thing that it's not with such big power as on the first example, yeah. But about uh, light power looseless, uh, we can we will talk a little bit later. Uh, for now, I just want you to understand this, how it works when you shooting uh, without high speed sync mode and with it. Uh, yeah, just uh, for those who want to, um, to start shooting with high speed sync mode, I have Rodex triggers or flashes, yeah? I will show you how to it's really important because uh, one day, uh, not one, several days, <laughs> uh, there were situations where I just forget to turn on high speed sync mode and yeah, result, result wasn't fine. So yeah, you can see that just I'm pushing on one button, there's sync, yeah, and it turn, turns on this mode, yeah. You need to turn on this mode on the trigger and as well on the flash, yeah. It's really important, otherwise camera, uh, will not recognize, will not recognize high speed sync. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I explained how high speed sync works and try to deliver information in simple possible way as I can. <laughs> uh, you can ask, uh, ask questions later. Yeah, I will try to explain more deeply if you don't understand. Uh, and now let's talk about pros and cons of this uh, shooting system. I will show you my work examples and we'll share some photography experience. So yeah, first let's talk about advantages. So probably the main and the first most important advantage of high speed sync mode is that it allows you to shoot with a wide open aperture in bright light situation, giving you nice shallow depth of field. Uh, because you can keep speeding your shutter up to make the background go darker and darker without changing the aperture. Uh, yeah, of course, this method uh, uses a lot of photographers in other genres like uh, portraits, wedding, car photography, at, uh, and etc. Remember when I said the shutter speed doesn't affect when you're shooting uh, with flash in normal mode. Uh, things are really changing when uh, you are starting to shoot in high speed sync mode. Now, instead of aperture, uh, we can control our exposure with shutter. So we can make darken background by speeding up the shutter and adding some power to your flash. Uh, and uh, this situation uses, like not situation, this benefit of high speed sync uses really a lot of photographers, not only sport photographers. So yeah, this is a great example uh, because 
uh, you can see that this shot was taken with aperture 1.4 yeah really bright uh, frame i was using godox uh, 1200 pro as k light uh, 600 pro as counter light and also there was a small 300 pro hidden, hidden between rocks uh, to highlight the water splashes um, yeah, <laughs> probably answering your question uh, prematurely, this photo is combination of two shots. While bike athlete was performing a trick, we were throwing a stone, a stone under him to gain a lot of splashes. Uh, but those splashes wasn't so ideal as I wanted, so we took the second shot uh, as well for having a chance to get this perfect splash structure structure sorry <laughs> so with that combination uh photo is also good but not ideal as i wanted uh, actually we will get back to this uh, photo when i will speak about uh, disadvantages disadvantages of high speed shooting yeah um the second very important advantage uh, using high speed uh, sync mode in uh, sports photography is obviously the shutter speed. <laughs> Remember that we are shooting action, not portraits or not static objects. Uh, our subject is always moving and sometimes really, really fast. So here's a little rule. Uh, the more faster moves athlete, the more power of flash you need to freeze him in air. As you can see, uh, also one rule is really important. Uh, while you are shooting on wide angle lens and the athlete is close to your camera, obviously the movement will be super fast. So you need to make a shutter faster and add some power to your flash. As you can see, in sports photography, we need to use high-speed sync mode even when it's dark or even at night, just because we need to avoid this motion blur effect, as I mentioned before. So high-speed sync is not only about sunny and bright days uh, when we're doing action. Uh, it's also about uh, like 70% of uh, shootings. <laughs> uh, Previously, I told that uh, there is really rare moments when uh, I am shooting uh, without high-speed sync. Uh, yeah, because with shutter 250, you still can get those sharp images without motion blur, but the subject needs to be really, really far away from the camera. Like, uh, well, yeah, like here in this situation on presentation. So he's far away from camera. I'm taking picture on telezoom lens. And uh, if there is some motion blurs, yeah, also like here, we can always uh, remove it in post. Also, when I'm shooting silhouettes, so I taking uh, setting up flash behind the athlete somewhere far, far away and athlete also is in front of camera, but really far away. He is not moving some really fast, uh, like he's uh, in midair position. And like in midair position, there is a moment when he's like, mm, like freezing for a microsecond. So you can catch this moment and uh, it will be good without uh, motion blur. Uh, okay, uh, and now about not obvious, but still advantage of high speed sync mode. Uh, how else we can keep the aperture open without increasing the shutter speed? Yeah, by using ND filters uh, that makes darken the frame and prevent much light into the sensor. Uh, but this method works well and is cheaper than buying a flash system with a trigger. Unfortunately, uh, this method uh, has one serious con that would no that will not allow you to use this method in sports photography and uh, this con is out of focus uh, probably in bright sunny day it will work good uh, but in cloud day or even at night because of light will not reach the camera sensor out of focus on the fast moving objects will failure a lot of time 
So that's why I'm not using ND filters in sports photography. And probably it only applies to situations when you're shooting only sports. So yeah, this issue is applied only to sports action photography. Because if you're shooting static uh, stuff, uh, this method with ND filters works well. But remember that you will still have to uh, plus one glass in front of your lens. Uh, yeah, maybe it's good cover, <laughs> but, but it's also, but also cheap and the filters are not qualitative. So you need to buy good one. Otherwise you will have issues with uh, white balance and uh, photo quality overall. So yeah, it's not obvious, but uh, when you're shooting uh, sport reportages and the filters doesn't work at all. And let's talk about disadvantages of high speed sync. Unfortunately, there are two of them. <laughs> uh, this photo actually is a backstage of the shot where MTB athlete uh, was performing a bike trick on the river with splashes. Uh, this shot not staged. <laughs> this guy literally was sitting there and realizing about what we still have to do after this photo session. <laughs> uh, and what was waiting us uh, after this photo shot was probably the most annoying disadvantage when you're using high speed sync in sports uh, action photography. Uh, because the hazard, hardest part of the, the shot was to carry all the equipment with bike over the hills where the pass to the location lays through bushes and the weeds that have been overground. So it was sad to realize that now we have to pack up all the stuff and carry all the equipment uh, back through all the sea hills. So yeah, uh, as you can see on the photo, sorry, there's a lot of equipment. <laughs> Uh, two heavy suitcases, two backpacks, three tripods, and a bike. Yeah. <laughs> and imagine to carry all this through hills and forest for about like three, four kilometers or five. So yeah, the most important uh, con is uh, that all equipment is quite heavy. Uh, you have a lot of things to carry. All these flashes with tripods are not just pocket types that you, that you know can, uh, can easily take out and shoot. And where you're carrying it once, it's absolutely not a problem. But uh, when you're doing it over and over again for almost every photo session, yeah, <laughs> it gets annoyed, annoying. Especially because a lot of locations where I am shooting are not so easy to, to get by car. They often need to climb somewhere or walk uh, several miles. And uh, yeah, it's kind of difficult sometimes. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm trying to be physically prepared <laughs> for this. Uh, as well as I'm traveling often to other countries. Sorry, on one. Yeah. As I am traveling often to other countries, I'm often taking all this stuff with me. So there's a lot of situations uh, when you need to pay additional fee for more baggage. Uh, so yeah, the first disadvantage is sizes and equipment weight, uh, especially when I've set up flashes somewhere on a tree or on a bridge, you know, where uh, hard to reach areas. Yeah, and second con, actually, it's not disadvantage, it's uh, just like technical feature of the high speed sync. Because, uh, for example, when you're shooting portraits, you can set up flashes quite close to the model. But in action, uh, because of movement, you need often to put flashes somewhere far away. Otherwise, athlete uh, just can break uh, your stuff while he's performing a trick. So this technical, technical feature means that you need a lot of flash power to use high speed, high speed sync mode in action photography. Also, the thing is that the higher shutter you have, the less light will gain your camera sensor. Remember that? Uh, so let me open previous slide. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. 
So in high-speed sync, mo uh, mod shutter now affects on exposure. Imagine when you're shooting at one to thousand of a sec, how small this slit between two curtains is. It's very small. And now imagine how less light your sensor will get through this small slit, especially when this slit passes through in a microsecond. And obviously, you need a huge flash power to collide the subject uh, while the slit is in front of your sensor. Also, if you will use softboxes or umbrellas, it will lead us to even less light. Uh, that, of course, of course, will affect exposure and uh, the final shot. But the uh, cool thing is that uh, nowadays cameras uh, have a huge dynamic range. So any exposure you can comp compensate in post. It's a really safe thing. <laughs> also, we can see there that uh, it needs a more power to use high-speed sync mode. So it will also affect on uh, our flash battery life. I can't say it precisely uh, because it did not measure time, but in rough numbers, it drains something about like 20, 30 percent uh, faster from your battery. So yeah, it's about disadvantage with uh, high-speed sync that yeah, it needs a really a lot of power. So yeah, in conclusion, uh, I want to say like in action photography, you need to have high spin sync mode. Sorry, <laughs> like uh, you can take shots without motion blur effect or without blackout without high speed sync. Yeah, and uh, it's all leads us uh, to have a lot of equipment and powerful flashes, uh, but not like very powerful. Uh, there's one more slide. <laughs> you can, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah, uh, of course, sometimes you don't need to use like everywhere AD1200 Pro. I'm often working with a 300 Pro and it's perfectly fits for a lot of situations, especially when uh, it's not bright sunny day. But yeah, in action and extreme sports, I'm using high speed sync mode in something about, uh, as I said, like uh, 70, 80 percent of uh, situations. And as far as I know, my colleagues in action sports use this mode just same often. Uh, the thing is that now in our days, we have such insane possibilities in photography. We can literally bring whole studio uh, in any situations, in any conditions, like in the forest, under the rain, on the rooftop, somewhere in the, you know, I don't know, garage uh, or desert. <laughs> and uh, we can take there a really cool shots, like mind blowing shots. And uh, I feel like in future when flashes uh, and cameras will get more powerful and uh, uh, more technology updated, we will have such amazing opportunity to create just mind blowing content, especially with uh, portraits and uh, action photography shots. So we already have that opportunity. And uh, this whole realization makes me really inspired. OK, thank you for listening. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry for my English mistakes. <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, you're right, mate. All right, thank you, Volodya. Uh, just one more point, uh, guys. Uh, because action photography outdoor is basically a flash mixing uh, with a natural light. That's why um, you need high speed sync because you need uh, the freeze, the natural light parts as well. But with the studio photography, um, you don't necessarily need um, high speed sync in order to freeze um, yeah, yeah. The, action, the actions. Um, I think uh, another photographer in the studio, specializing in the studio photography who has already mentioned that. So there is a clear difference between the T.1 values and high speed sync. It's totally different to generous uh, yeah. for your information. Now I have a few questions uh, for Vlodia. To start with, this is the question I I want to under I want to know as well. It's like <laughs> it's lots of gears, man. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, basically, mm, 
you know, there is time when I am shooting for myself. I just like, oh, I've got an idea. Oh, uh, some uh, bike athlete or skateboard athlete or parkour athlete. Uh, for example, John. <laughs> hey, John, I have an idea. We can shoot this uh, photo. Let's take it. He's, yeah, yeah, let's go. So when I'm shooting for myself, I'm uh, uh, often asking friends to help or even don't ask help, I am doing, yeah, doing all by myself, uh, carrying all bags and uh, all this stuff. Uh, sometimes athlete helps me. But of course, when there is uh, uh, like paid photo session, uh, commercial photo session, uh, yeah, I, I better will pay for assistance and he will do all the stuff, he will carry, <laughs> he will uh, set up flashes, yeah. It's just saving your time uh, because you can spend whole day only for one photo if you have this time. But if you have only one or two hours of shooting, so yeah, better to have an assistant. Uh, so yeah, basically I have, uh, when I need it, I have like one or two uh, photo assistant, uh, one for uh, to set up flashes and probably one for help with carrying. And nowadays there's needed one more assistant to film backstage. <laughs> so yeah. Um, unfortunately, no, I have only a D600 uh, Pro. So yeah, I basically don't have experience with, with uh, a D600 non-Pro. So maybe Aris can answer this question <laughs> because hey yeah, Bruce, uh, has... if you're using BD six hundred, uh, the only difference is BD six hundred doesn't support TTL, but it does support high speed sync. If that's what you're asking. Yeah, yeah, you need uh, because yeah, sometimes. Uh, um, you know, it depends, you need and no, <laughs> because sometimes it depends uh, on how far away from the flash you are. If signal from flash to trigger is good, then yeah, you will uh, put high speed sync mode on trigger and it's automatically will enable through the signal on the flash. But if you will uh, go far away from the flash, sometimes I'm shooting really far away and signal doesn't uh, flash can, uh, will not burst. Yeah. So if you will turn uh, high speed sync mode on your trigger and flash is somewhere far away, it uh, uh, will not uh, get that signal. So basically I am always trying to turn high speed sync mode on the flash and on the trigger and uh, see that it's, yeah, it works. So uh, my it it's uh, it depends on the camera model too. Uh, on my A one, it automatically, um, I don't know, it, it works. Uh, but on some brands, it might not necessarily work. So best to double check on both the light side and uh, the trigger side before you uh, before yeah. you start shooting. It's a, oh, here's a tricky question. Yeah, um, as I said before, yeah. Uh, it really affects, and uh, it affects uh, on like 30, no, oh yeah, kind of 30% uh, uh, flash power. Because uh, he need, uh, when he bursts, he do it a lot of time. And of course, uh, the top of the power, like double size it, or one to three, third part size it. So yeah, it affects, but... Uh, uh, you can always uh, like remove this uh, disadvantage when you put a uh, flash closer to your uh, subject or object. Hmm. Okay. Uh, about shots. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, that's a tricky question because <laughs> Do you remember previous uh, slideshow? Yeah, when I showing this shot where bike athletes where athlete was performing trick on the river with splashes. So yeah, this shot we literally uh, were doing uh, for seven hours. 
<laughs> so one shot for several hours. Uh, like, but if you're asking about attempts, uh, so yeah, there, there are sometimes a lot of uh, attempts because um, if you're doing staged photo and you have a lot of time, so you have like space for mistakes. You can uh, do shots, set up some camera or flash uh, differently and take shots again and again set up, again take shots. So you have time to do this. Uh, when you, of course, uh, working in commercial on in reportage uh, shootings, uh, you need to like feel through your experience. So it's that moment when experience uh, helps you and you can uh, set all things uh, from the first or second time and do successful shorts already like on the uh, second time, on, on the first time. Uh, and about batteries, actually. Uh, Sorry. Okay. okay, okay, but I will answer, yeah. yeah. About batteries. Sorry, I, I, I jump ahead. Yeah, I'll go back okay, to that yeah. question. I, I will just answer, yeah, about batteries, I remember. Uh, about batteries, uh, ID 300 Pro. Uh, when I was shooting with them, uh, there were situations when uh, batteries uh, were uncharged. So yeah, if you're shooting like in three or four hours in a row and using flash on its full power and especially on high speed sync, uh, yeah, three hours about that, uh, they will, after three hours, they will uncharge. Uh, with ID 600 Pro and 1200 Pro, uh, there were rare moments when uh, battery were uncharged, especially uh, 1200 Pro. It's like my favorite flash. It's powerful, of course, <laughs> and uh, it's uh, battery life. It's very impressive. Like in all my experience of shooting with this uh, flash, never uh, this flash was uncharged. Uncharged, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's going to be available on YouTube um, soon as we finish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love your really cool person that you asked this question. <laughs> so yeah, I really love this question. Uh, I opened like this trick <laughs> not so far ago that you can use softbox uh, with uh, high speed sync uh, in high speed sync mode. But yeah, of course, you need a lot of power. As I said in presentation, if you use high speed sync mode, it drains flash power, uh, light power. And if you will attach softbox and umbrellas, it also will drain light power. So in combination uh, with uh, high speed sync mode and sort boxes, it's, it drains, I think, about not 30, uh, already 50 maybe percent of power, maybe 40, 30, 50. So yeah, but when you use soft boxes and umbrellas, uh, especially in action uh, and extreme sports photography, where uh, many of shots are with rough light, uh, but you doing this shot with like soft light, with soft boxes, it's just next level of action photography. <laughs> I don't know. It looks a uh, very, a very like more perfect and uh, softer, and the uh, result is a lot qualitative. So if you have possibility to attach uh, soft box, uh, so yeah, do it because. It's very uh, depends on quality and will uh, do your shot uh, to the next level. Mm. Uh, what means in low light, like at night and dark uh, environment? Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, The most common, mis not mistake, like the most common issue when you're shooting in the dark uh, is that when you need to keep background of your subject or object visible. So 
in this situation you need really to high uh, up the ISO yeah so ISO will uh, lights and highlight background probably night city if you were doing uh, shooting in front of city yeah? uh, and uh, you by with the ISO you highlighting background but with the uh, flash uh, lowering power of flash you will uh, take less overexposed subject in front of this background so this is maybe the most uh, common problem when you're shooting at night but if you don't need back background it's uh, not a problem because uh, flashes works perfectly and uh, what i love is that in the night you don't need to put your flash on full power absolutely not because you don't need uh, to highlight so much subject he will always be highlighted yeah so bruce really you need to um i think you need to clarify your question a bit but uh, if you are thinking about autofocus and all that kind of issue you can always turn the modeling lights on right uh, ad 1200 pro has a full 40 watts of modeling lights and uh, i think ad 300 pro has a 12 watts of modeling lights which really helps your uh, autofocus um in, in that yeah. sense yeah yeah, yeah. And that pretty much summarizes uh, all of our, our questions. If there's no further question, I would I want to thank uh, Vladia for your time, and uh, it was a beautiful presentation. And um, <laughs> and yeah, I, I I love your knowledge about high speed sync and how how you use it to mix with natural lights to freestyle actions. And you guys, um, you please do visit his amazing and very unique. Uh, photographers, please do visit his um, Instagram and his Instagram handles, which is right on the on the video, which is action photographer. And um, besides, you know, high speed lighting, and you will see how he styles, uh, how he style his sub, uh, his models, as well as how he uses little prop. I love the way he's using a little chain to have this spiral <laughs> sort of leading line towards the main subject. So the way he frames his subjects is amazing, guys. Uh, uh, he has lots of BTS videos on his Instagram too. So if you guys like action photography, uh, go there and check him out. And thank you again, Volodia, for your amazing mm -hmm. presentation. Yeah, one moment. Uh, also, guys, yeah. uh, I'm, as you already uh, heard <laughs> i'm not perfect in english with speech but but you can always ask me a question on instagram or facebook i will answer more um, detailed answers so yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you vlodia uh you have thank you thank, thank you you're being so nice all right guys this is your mind iris tau i will see you until next time ciao soon have a nice day. goodbye <laughs>